Train the muscles, not the joints. Welcome back to Natural Land Bodybuilding. And today I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about when my brother and I wanted to be Bruce Lee. Most of you guys that grew up in the 80s or 90s or whatever, uh, you're probably heavily influenced by Chuck Norris and Bruce Lee films or Jean-Claude Van Damme or even Roadhouse, you know, Patrick Swayze was great in Roadhouse. And basically I grew up around uh, David Carradine as well, like the Kung Fu. Kung, Kung Fu was a bit before my time, but my father used to watch that on TV and I'd be asking, him, asking my dad, like, why is that guy taking his shoes off? What's, what's going on, right? And, and of course, there was the cowboy honor where he didn't want to kick people in the face with his shoes because he didn't want to get any, you know, unnecessary marks on their face as he gave them the foot to the chin or whatever, right? So uh, there was this honor code and all that kind of stuff. So I don't know, it was interesting to a kid, you know? I was only about five, six years old, but that was interesting. But I remember not really being interested in joining martial arts or karate until I saw the movie Game of Death on TV. That thing popped up and Bruce Lee in that orange motorcycle outfit kicking the shit out of like 10, 15 guys at once. I was like, holy shit, like who is this guy? I mean, with nunchucks sw swinging around or whatever. And I was like, that's the guy I wanna be, that, that's it. And my brother and I saw that. And you know, I still feel sorry for my parents to this day because uh, <laughs> My brother and I, especially me, but my brother and I were extremely energetic kids. I mean, to put it politely. I mean, we probably should have been on something. <laughs> probably, somebody probably should have, you know, shot us with a deer tranquilizer or something because we had so much physical energy. We were like fire bombs ready to go. So what happened was when I wanted something or Jamie wanted something, we wore our parents down. Like, and it didn't matter how long it took, it was like water on a stone, you know what I mean? Like, it's like after a thousand years of that water running over the stone, eventually that stone would yield to the water and become smoothened out, you know? <laughs> so that there'd be this big ravine where there was nothing but rocks before. Well, that's exactly the way my brother and I were. We saw martial arts and we were playing hockey at the time, but once we saw the martial arts movie with Bruce Lee, uh, we became obsessed. I had to watch all the Bruce Lee films and I had to be, 100% in karate. Now I knew a few people, and this was in grade five, I knew a few people that were in karate and they were in this, this karate called Ishinru, which was really stupid to me. They held their hands like this and did these little short punches and shit. It, uh, the, the, the sensei was an idiot too. I didn't like the guy, he was a dirt bag. But, but anyway, that was the only karate that was close, right? But this guy was a typical like, what's that guy called on, on the internet now? Like Bob the martial arts guy. Like he basically, was pack of smokes and a case of beer in between, you know, karate gratings or karate demonstrations, right? But yet then he teach karate. I don't know, there was something dishonorable about the, about the dude somehow. But that was the only karate that was close to us. But my dad took us to a different dojo eventually. After about two years of wearing them down, they finally said, okay, all right, you, you really want to do this? Okay, fine. I guess, I guess you're serious about this because you haven't shut up about it for two years. So we'll take you and see if you want to check this karate place out. And that was a place that was about a half an hour away from me which was Maple Ridge, but that's where my dad worked at the time. So we figured out we could commute back and forth and he could drop us off at karate while he was going to shop or going to work or whatever. So we figured it out and I was hooked. Like when my brother and I joined karate, see, we discovered that not all children were motivated by the same thing because I looked around and I saw these children, these, these little people punching the air and kicking the air, but they were kind of like doing it like us. Uh, you know, they were kind of like, there was no real soul behind it. There was no intensity. There was not enough Bruce Lee in it. <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> My brother and I saw that there wasn't enough Bruce Lee in it and we set about to fixing this problem. So <laughs> the minute we joined, it was like a whirlwind. I mean, I had memorized the manual. I knew all the, the, the Japanese names for the kicks and the punches and the blocks. I knew the first kata within a, you know, a few days. And I was already working my way through. And it got to a point where my brother one time got up in front of the class because sometimes the sensei would say, hey, get up and, and do a kata, right? And uh, show me that you know it. So my brother would get up there and do the kata. And you could hear his, his uniform like snapping the air as he was blocking and then punching, right? And I remember the kids turning all towards me with a certain amount of fear in their eyes. <laughs> it's like, 
are you guys practicing at home? And I turned to them, I'm like, well, aren't you, right? Because what they didn't realize is that karate night didn't end at karate night. Karate night at the dojo just began karate life at home because my brother and I would be out on the front yard kicking the shit out of each other with the pads on and <laughs> neighbors would be coming out of their house and giving us shit be saying, hey, you kids, we can't beat up at each other. You stop that fighting right now. And my brother and I were like, yeah, yeah, whatever. And we kept on fighting, right? We had the mouth guards in, bloody lips and whatever. <laughs> you know, the odd kick in the nuts and the shins all bruised up. But we were so serious about becoming martial arts superheroes. I mean, uh, you know, if Bruce Lee did it, why can't we, right? That's the joy of being 10 or 11 years old. You know, anything's possible. So it wasn't long before, uh, after many children were getting the wind knocked out of them or, you know, there was a couple tough kids in the class, but most of them were very, let's just say, uninterested in the battlefield. And <laughs> when they would start sparring with my brother and I, we'd be like, you know, coming at them, you know, full steam like a rhinoceros and they'd be backing away like, oh, what's this, what's wrong with this guy? He's taking this shit way too seriously. And then before I know it, there'd be some crying and tears. And, uh, and of course we get hauled into the sensei's office and, and he'd be saying, hey, you're supposed to control this and all this and whatever, what's wrong with you? And it was only a matter of time before my brother and I at 12 years old got pushed up to the adult class which was supposed to be starting for 15 year olds and above. But my brother and I were 12. I think it was around 12 years old and we got put up to the adult class because we were causing too much mayhem in the kids class. So <laughs> onto the adult class we went, right? And that was pretty, pretty much the right decision in a way because we were forced to kind of, you know, I, I can't tell you how many times I got my bell rung by some guy that had a boxing background and then he just basically jawed me, you know, and uh, <laughs> showed me to keep my hands up. But that was really, our thing. Now, the other thing that happened was, and this goes back into my brother and I's intensity, is that my mom and dad had friends. Um, uh, it's amazing how good of friends these people were because <laughs> there was this one woman named Mary who was like an aunt to us, like a really close family member, almost like a second mom. And she would have a boyfriend and this boyfriend would come over and his name was Bud and he was a super nice guy. I still love this guy. I, I don't ever see him anymore, but he was such a nice guy. But he became a human punching bag for my brother and I because it was almost like Pink Panther and Kato. So as soon as he'd come over, we'd, we'd dive bomb him or jump off the stairs or there'd be some sort of kick to the ass he'd get. And then my brother would be fighting at the front and I'd be kicking the guy behind and he'd be wrestling with us and <laughs> trying to keep from injuring us. But at the same time, this was a perfect practice arena for my brother and I to test out our new moves, right? So <laughs> it got so bad that <laughs> the guy had so many bruises on him. I don't know how he put up with it. Uh, honestly, he probably would have been justified to just giving us a backhand, knocking us out, but that was just a, an indication of the intensity that we had. Now, of course, I was a smaller kid, and so was my brother. We weren't big kids, and I found that out in high school, of course, once I started dealing with bigger kids. They scared the crap out of me because they were so big that, you know, a couple punches or kicks, the minute they'd wrestle you down, that, that would be it. There would be nothing, nothing I could do, right? So I was pretty timid, so that's where my weight training on top of the martial arts started to come together. Let's just say I started to embrace the Van Damme self. So I started doing that and started to notice that I was getting quite lethal with some of my hits. Uh, when I would sidekick, I could basically shatter bones or at least, you know, vibrate people, right? And even my brother said when I, was, when I would kick him, because we'd always get so pissed off at each other, and there'd be these sparring classes where everybody's sparring and you know, everybody's under control, but of course brothers, you put them together, there was no control at that point. Like I remember him doing a spinning elbow and cracking my tooth one time and <laughs> I would kick him as hard as I could in the arm and he said he felt his bones like vibrate like a bell <laughs> after I'd hit him. So this is the type of stuff we would have going on. Like the sibling rivalry would then really get taken out in the karate dojo. So it was almost like a, a family dispute, right? So. I would go to tournaments and stuff and, and of course it was all point sparring with martial arts where you can only hit lightly to the head or just touch, you know, and then you could, you could knock the window to somebody if you hit them the body right, but it was mostly the body that was the main uh, area. You couldn't kick to the nuts obviously or the knees or anything, but you could actually hit the body and get a point. Kind of like in Karate Kid, and, and that's the other funny thing. When I was younger, 12 years old, Karate Kid came out around the same time, which only made my brother and I worse. Like we only got even more disastrous in our enthusiasm for martial arts at that point. So I would go to these tournaments and get frustrated sometimes because there'd be this, you know, small kid or, or somebody or, you know, a teenager or whatever, they just, you know, tap you on the head and then they get a point, but there was no real uh, toughness behind it, you know? 
And I remember uh, I went down to this tournament down in Auburn, Washington, that, which is about uh, a two hour drive from where I live. And I remember one kid tried to come in like this light sort of backhand to the top of the head. And it wasn't his fault, but me, I was just so high strung. I basically just threw a side kick out right away. And he was in the middle of the air as he was throwing this out. And I hit him right in the rib cage. And he just flew backwards and fell and, he, you know, broke a couple of his ribs and he went out in a stretcher and that was the end of it. Uh, you know, I had parents booing. It was like I was Johnny Lawrence from Karate Kid at that point. And, <laughs> and they were like, get rid of that monster. He's a crazy man. Like that kind of stuff. Like it was pretty, pretty brutal. But that was how intense my brother and I were. We were uh, very motivated. And I think, of course, as a lot of kids these days or even back then, you know, uh, the pressures that I was experiencing in the social life around not being tough or being bullied and stuff even made it worse, right? So I was, you know, pretty much compensating at that point. But that said, there was some funny stuff that happened because as the years wore on, my brother and I became karate instructors, at least on a small level. Like you had to instruct a number of classes in order to be able to go for your black belt and that sort of thing. And we had some friends along the way uh, that wanted to join the class. One guy actually, uh, I had had my first fist fight because of him. I was protecting him. He was basically sitting in his car and then this one guy just went up to him and said, hey, you looking at my girlfriend and then punched him in the face. And then I stepped in and got in the guy's way and said, hey, don't, that's my friend. You, you can, you know, screw off, whatever. And then the guy took off and then he got a bigger guy to come back after me. And then that was my first fist fight, which I had in the McDonald's parking lot. And I ended up winning that one. So that was kind of the history I had with this guy. And my brother became good friends with this guy. And he was a guy that we used to build, you know, BMX bike tracks with and stuff and, and whatever. So basically he was a guy that we had known from when we were really young, where we used to BMX race with him and stuff. But as we got older, you know, sometimes you, your hobbies kind of separate and then come back together again. Well, anyway, it turns out that he wanted to join karate with my brother and I, and this was around 18 years old, 17, 18 years old. And this is the funniest story because what happened was when people start sparring and you see this in a lot of these boxing YouTube videos and stuff where, you know, one person has the agreement of have, let's go at 50% and then the other guy goes at like 90%. The guy that was going at 50% gets pretty mad and then sometimes it turns into an all out brawl. Well, this would happen with this guy and my brother and him would train together and my brother would teach him some stuff and then that guy would try to try it on my brother and, and turn it up to 100%, right? Take, you know, haymaker swings and all this stuff trying to knock my brother's head off. Well, my brother would have to put him in his place invariably from time to time and it would, and it would happen quite a bit. But one time I remember my dad and my brother and I were in the dojo with this guy, Blake. Okay, Blake will remember this if he watches this. And uh, Blake was sparring with Jamie. They're having a good little kind of like, you know, ha, ah, okay, you got me, okay, nice one, nice one, you know, easy going. And then Blake starts to throw some haymakers, trying to, you know, because he starts getting frustrated because my brother was pretty fast. And my brother was the king of frustrating you because he would dance in and out and basically you could hit him and then he'd just, ting, 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 hit you and then gone. And you're like, you just start to get fucking mad, right? So anyway, this guy started to get mad. So he started taking hay haymaker swings at my brother. Well, my brother looked at him like, and my brother, it's the funny thing is my brother was a very passive guy for the most part. Like if there was somebody that was more the fireball out of the two of us, it was me. Like I was usually the guy to get angry and, and, and fight and sometimes preemptively fight when it wasn't necessary. Uh, but my brother would be like, oh, whatever. And he would just kind of like, oh, you know, you know, poor me, whatever. And then he would just walk away and he, he would just basically just ignore the whole thing. Right. And then I'd step in a lot of times. That was usually what I would do. But in this case, or in some cases, my brother, when he did get mad, it was, it was bad. Right. So he never got mad, but when he did, it was like, watch out. Right. It was like, he'd go like, oh, what is that movie that, uh, what is that movie that Robert Downey Jr. was in when he says, never go full retard? Well, my, my brother would go full retard, okay? That's, that's what happened. So anyway, Blake came in with a couple haymakers and then my brother ducked, got all the way and then he gr gritted his teeth. And when you see Jamie grit his teeth, like, like this, then you know something bad's gonna happen. And it was within about two or three seconds <laughs> My brother came in with a jab, came with a punch. I think it was another hook. And then he came up with a kick and just whap, hit Blake right here right in the face. And Blake was like this. And then you could see his eyes weren't quite right. And then he was swinging, but it was almost like there was no soul in there. Like Jamie literally kicked the soul out of his body. <laughs> 
And then my, my brother was going to finish him off. <laughs> you got to remember, this was supposed to be an innocent, easygoing match, but my brother went to go finish him off. <laughs> so my dad jumped in the way, grabbed onto Blake, and basically saved his life. Because honestly, Blake, <laughs> I don't know how bad the brain damage would have been, but it probably would have been quite significant. So <laughs> now you think this would be the end of it, right? You think that Blake would have learned his lesson, but Blake was the king of never learning lessons. That's the one thing I know about this guy, and he would be in denial about it, but he might be different to this day, but I've... Let's just say he's... Let's just say he's risked his life a few times by speaking when he shouldn't be speaking. But, but anyway, that's another discussion between him and me. But anyway, the bottom line is that one day, Blake moved in with us at our house when we moved into another uh, neighborhood. And... Uh, he was in between places and he was in between jobs. So my brother and I had this summer job where we would work on apartment buildings, painting uh, balconies, pressure washing, uh, doing some landscaping, that sort of thing. And it was a friend of the family, that Mary, that actually got us that job. So we were doing that job every year and we said, oh, Blake, why don't you come work with us? Because there's another student position open. Why don't you come and, and you could work with us too. So he started working with us. Well, the one thing that most of you don't know about Blake is that he was a guy that he trained pretty hard. He weight trained pretty hard. He was there weight training with us all the time. He, was, he loved weight training, lifting weights, but his metabolism was really fast. So he had to eat a lot of food. Like I'm talking about, he would brag about eating 7,000 to 10,000 calories a day. Like that's what he would do. Like he would try to put down three Big Macs in a sitting or four Big Macs. Like it was crazy the amount of food that this guy could eat. So of course you get three guys that are all training in the house three guys that are pretty broke uh, fighting over the amount of food in the refrigerator there's going to be some territory disputes let's put it that way so so one day my brother and I and Blake go to work and Blake pulls out his lunch box or whatever his bag and he pulls out two massive sandwiches like like I tell you there's probably you know a pound of meat on each sandwich like as much as he could fit this roast beef right so all the cold cuts in the fridge basically disappeared. And my brother, when he went to make a sandwich that morning, discovered that there was no food left. So he's like, oh, I guess I have to go without lunch today. Uh, oh shit, you know? So he went to work without a lunch. So he sees Blake, who had a lunch, he sees Blake pull out these two large, like massive, you know, feed an Ethiopian family of 10 uh, sandwiches. And my brother looks over there and he goes, hey, where'd you get that from? And Blake goes, oh, I got it from the fridge. I just uh, made it with the last of the meat or whatever. And Jamie goes, okay, well, give me one. And Blake turns to him. And this is where I, I say, this guy is like, he's dancing with the devil, right? He turns to Jamie and he goes, fuck you, right? That's what he says. So <laughs> Jamie, <laughs> Jamie, as we know, this is what happens. The, the, he starts gritting his teeth. The jaw goes like this. And he's like, we're putting the gloves on after work. And Blake's like, well, fine, right? Now this is after. Blake had already had his bell rung once or twice by Jamie already. And sure enough, I didn't go to watch this because it was just, this was like a never ending saga between those two. <laughs> I think I was at the gym or something like that. So basically after work, Jamie and Blake went to the squash court or one of the racquetball courts, put on the gloves and Jamie knocked him out. And I don't, it was like a right cross or some shit. Blake went down hit his head on the, on the, the cement <laughs> stitches across here. <laughs> and that was it. It was like all for a fucking sandwich. So yeah, this is a martial arts career, but my brother became devastating. So this is the thing, and, and, and he would laugh about this stuff or whatever, but I'm known as, as the black sheep of the family in a lot of ways. Like I'm kind of like the guy that was the fireball and whatever, and oh, there's something wrong with that guy. He's just, just too angry or says his mind too much or whatever, or he's too explosive. But my brother did more damage to his friends than I did, although I did choke out Blake one time too, but, but that's another story. But the funny thing is, when I was around 19, 20 years old, I decided uh, after hurting my back and deadlifting wrong, right, I had to choose between bodybuilding and karate. So I had to really say, okay, what's going to be the best for my body? What is going to help me uh, from a bodybuilding point of view and stuff? And what's going to keep me from not being injured? And I noticed that I was you know, squatting five plates after going to karate and stuff. And I was getting injured sometimes because, because I was overtraining. So my brother, he stayed mostly with karate and he took some time off lifting weights and he started getting faster and more coordinated. And honestly, there was, I don't know if there's too many people in the dojo that he didn't actually 
have a good tiff with from time to time or he didn't knock them out or something. Like he was just so intense about it. He became quite dangerous. So anyway, yeah, that was the time that me and my brother wanted to be Bruce Lee and, that, and that's kind of what we went to. But I had to decide to go to bodybuilding because of an injury, mostly. That was really what happened. And that's why I, I stayed with bodybuilding, which was a better decision for longevity. But uh, if I'm, I'm really thankful that UFC stuff wasn't out back then because I probably would have got involved in that and probably gotten my head beat in, who knows, right? So yeah, that was the time that my brother knocked out his best friend. So I hope this entertained you somehow. Thanks a lot for watching. If you need to get a hold of me, just go to naturalgalantbodybuilding.com and thanks to the Patreon supporters and take care for now.